I'm Bishop E. Earl Jenkins, and I personally would like to invite you to be part of this life-changing encounter whereby you can bear witness that God's love, yes, is real. Welcome to True Love Center, where God's love is truly the center of attraction. True Love Center, formerly known as True Servant Church, has been in existence for over 20 years. Throughout its tenure, we have experienced phenomenal growth in the lives of our members. 
We believe in the spirit of excellence that transcends into our worship experience, our youth ministry, outreach, musical production, and other ancillary ministries. Come be a part of a life change experience here at True Love Center, located at 2630 South Broad Street, Hamilton, New Jersey, or log on to truelovecenter.net at 10 a.m. every Sunday and witness a powerful message. Whether you're near or far, you can be part of this assembly by either meeting us here on location or just tapping the e-member button and become an online member and someone will contact you immediately. Every voice. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are so excited to have you with us tonight. We are thrilled and we are honored that the Lord has allowed you to be a part of this wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Um, I'm just uh, so elated that you would join us. Um, we have a powerful word tonight. Um, I'm really thrilled about teaching this word. A pretty long day. Uh, a lot of things were getting done, bank meetings, um, all kinds of stuff. But the Lord had purpose in our heart to prepare this message a few weeks ago. So now you're going to hit this message and it's going to go on for a few weeks. Um, it's going to deal with prayer and, and I'm going to introduce you to something that I think is going to bless you at the end. And I'm going to ask you to go on to my um, YouTube page to download it just to listen to what God has, has spoken to my heart concerning you and some people that I'd like for you to share that with. But we're excited. I want you to please, man, and please, sir, just tap somebody to let them know that we're online and that we're about to go into the word of the Lord. Again, as I'm speaking, if you're in agreement, hit some hearts, hit some thumbs up. Amen. Make some comments. Amen. When I say tap your neighbor, that means tap whatever we say or whatever you want to say. Amen. So. We just want to have some church online. We just want to have some church online. I can't see you. You can see me. So uh, let's just have some church. Again, thank you so much for this opportunity to share with you. The Lord is doing some great things. I just want to encourage all of you, please, if it was my advice, y'all stay home until um, things get better. I know a lot of things are, I mean, a lot of people are saying it's okay to do this and to do that, what have you, but let's be safe. Let's just walk our way through, although we're parent planning our re-entry back into the church but we're going to do it in a slow pace and we'll give you more of uh, well, how we plan to do that so please man and please sir uh just be safe be safe continue to wash your hands continue to wear your mask continue to stay home much as you can okay so that we can make sure that we uh govern ourselves according to safety and not so much what people are saying okay so let's get into the word of the lord Amen. As always, we're not going to be before you long, but we have a word that we want to share. Again, that's going to go for a few weeks. So please, man, please, sir, and I'm going to ask you to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. That's E. Earl Jenkins. Okay, E. Earl Jenkins. If you subscribe to that, please. We need you there. Once you see the message here, it's going to go directly there. So you won't see this on Facebook long. So we'll refer this message to people on our YouTube page. Okay, let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 12th chapter and the fourth verse. Amen. The Lord's been dealing with me with some unsolved mysteries as it relates to the church and the kingdom of God and how people are to understand who he is and not so much uh, what we've been taught because coming up, we were taught some things that are kind of contradictory to what um, was intended to mean. And so a lot of times we were taught from a literal perspective and not from a, um, a revelation perspective. And so we're gonna, we're gonna, not to change doctrine, but we wanna make sure that we understand what God means by prayer, what he means by faith, um, then those kinds of principal things. So let's get to Jeremiah uh, 12 and four, amen. Jeremiah 12 and four. And it reads, how long, how long shall the land mourn this pandemic? This whole thing we're dealing with. And the herbs of every field wither. For the wickedness of them that dwell therein. The beasts, I mean the beasts are consumed and the birds. Because they said he shall not see our last end. How long is this going to last? God, how, how, how long, Jeremiah said, how long is... Are people going to be headstrong? And how long? How long? God, give us an idea of why we're dealing with this. And I, I want to talk to you today on, on lamenting, okay? And pretty much in, in a phrase of God, can we talk? I want to 
I want to talk to you. I want to I want to pray, but in my prayer, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you as if you're my father, which you are, and I will go to my father and talk to him earnestly and and a sincere heart. And I want to be able to talk to you from my heart. And and therefore, I want to talk to you today, church, about lamenting, crying before the Lord, not necessarily physically, but being able to approach God with a rhetorical, um, real question or questions and concerns. I know we were told as we were growing up that it's not um, um, right, not pleasant to question God, but is asking God, questioning God, when he says, you have not because you ask not, what, what does that mean? You have not because you ask not. Does that mean I don't have what I want because I don't ask for it? No, no, no. Uh, uh, it, it, it simply means that a lot of times we don't have answers to what we're looking for because we never ask God to give us the answer, even though it may not be what we want to hear. Amen. So I, I want to ask God some things and hopefully he would reveal to us in ways that we will understand. And I want to do that through prayer. And I want to I talk about this prayer. And what does prayer mean? How does it really work? First of all, uh, prayer constitutes the most direct expression of religious belief, whereby we who are created in the image of God have an opportunity to talk to God. Okay? We who are created in his image we have an opportunity to talk to him. The image of God. God is an image that is inside of us. We have the image of God in us. Let us make man in our image. We have that image. We have this treasure in this earthen vessel. God is in us. In us. And so that image is adjacent to our emotions. That's why sometimes we thought we heard God uh, to leave the church when it was really our emotions. Only to return back and say it wasn't God, it was me just being mad or upset over something. And yeah, and we blame God, but it's really our emotions. So <laughs> although our emotions, watch this y'all, can be mistaken as the voice of God, it's yet the conduit in which we express our most sincere sentiments and concerns to God through the effectual fervency of our prayer, our emotionalism, our our sincerity, not expressions per se, but how we feel from the heart. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. God sees the heart, not our expressions, because you can worship God with formality, have a form of godliness, deny the power thereof. Praise him with his lips, but your heart be far from him. So he's not talking about the expressions or how well you dance or how you shout. But you can be quiet and still have a sincere yearning for God after his heart, like David. Okay, so when we look at this particular text in, in Jeremiah's heart, uh, the book of Lamentations here is a, a song book that expresses Jeremiah's sorrowful heart. Jeremiah was dealing with something. Uh, Jeremiah is known for the, uh, as the weeping prophet, who constantly grieved over the condition of his people. Sin had condemned the nation, and as a result, the Babylonians had come in and invaded the land and destroyed the temple and, and took the people captive. And so he was grieving, which is figuratively what's happening today. The church doors are closed. The enemy has invaded the land with this pandemic, and people are dying, and we're living in captivity, even in the luxury of our homes, but we're still within limits of our capacity and so we're here in this dormant situation in life and we're faced with all types of stuff because of negligence and we understand that however unlike Jeremiah many of us are crying but are afraid to ask the infamous question why we 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 we, we, we see things around us that doesn't make sense and and we're asking the question in ourselves, why? But we're not asking God, why? Can I be real? Our loved ones dying alone, who served in the church 
so long but end up dying alone without a traditional ceremony. I know it's kind of hard to, to hear me, but why are innocent and the doctors and the nurses who are helping those who perhaps were negligent and taking care of themselves, but the helpers are diagnosed with disease and are dying? Why, why are our leaders and generals of the faith dying in faith, hoping to rise up to come back to resurrect their churches? Why? We, 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 we see this, but we're afraid to ask why. And I get it. Uh, but my sisters and brothers, at what point are we able to be transparent with God without losing the respect of his deity and the continuity of our faith? At what point are we able to go to God as children as we would want our children to come to us and be transparent and talk to us when they're going through something or question us when they don't agree with something we've done. It's, it should be okay. I, I remember before the word of faith movement came in, I guess in the early 80s, lamenting or crying before God was the time when we can truly lay down our burdens before the Lord without hesitation or restraint. But now it's perceived or presumed as a sign of weakness and a lack of faith when we question uh, this situation or we cry as a result of what we're going through. Where's your faith? Stand up, be strong, but you need to just tap somebody that lost a child, tap somebody that lost a loved one, tap yourself and say, I just want to cry right now. I don't, I don't want to act like everything is okay. I just need to cry before God. It doesn't mean I lost faith. It doesn't mean I don't trust God, but I just need for this moment to just cry. It's okay to cry. It tap somebody and say, it's okay to cry. It's okay to cry. In fact, crying is, can be a sign of sincerity and fervency that you are earnestly going before God with this thing that's weighing you down. The Welling Wall or the Western Wall was the place where the people of God went to just well before God, to cry before God on behalf of themselves or the people. David said, I sought the Lord and he heard my cry and delivered me from my stress. Jesus cried out, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, he wept so that the, the, the tears and the sweat fell off his face as blood dripped from the veins. Like it to that, it's okay to cry. Look at somebody say, it's okay to cry. But after you cry, you got to get up and finish what God begun in you. After you cry, you got to then re reconsider some things and, and get yourself together and finish what God has begun in you. Get up from there. Even if, 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 if you don't get the answer that you anticipated, it has nothing to do with the lack of faith, but God's will being done. And when his will is being done, you got to get, remember who you are in God. Cry for your moment and get up and finish what God begun in you. It's all right to cry. I want to turn to 2 Samuel. And the key thing I'm trying to get you to understand in this segment of this message is that after you cry, get up and finish what God has called you to do. Let's go to 2 Samuel 12, 16. Through 18, we're going to talk for a second here because we're talking about David in this particular text. I'm a matter of fact, I'm going to do 2 Samuel 12, 16 through 18, then verse 20. In this particular text, we're talking about David who had a child, and that child was born out of his sin, and that child was sick. And David now, verse 18, 16 says, David therefore besought God for the child. He and David fasted. This is what he did. And went in. That means he, he went in on behalf of his child. He went in and laid all night upon the earth. He went in praying for his baby that God would heal him. Verse 17, and the elders of his house arose and went to him 
to raise him up from the earth. Come on, David, get up now. Come on. He was laying out before God. God, I need you to heal my child. My child is dealing with this disease. My uncle is dealing with this disease. My cousin is dealing with this disease. They, they were tested yeah, positive. And, and, and I'm dealing with a lot of people around me that are dying. And I'm praying, God, I need you to heal them. Set them free. Raise them up. David was praying for his child, that God would heal this child. The elders came around and, and tried to get him up. He said, no, I got to stay here until God gives me my answer. And he stayed there. As the elders of the house arose and went to him to raise him up on the earth, but he would not, neither did he eat bread. He didn't eat, couldn't eat. Have you been there before? You couldn't eat because you're so worried about what's happening around you. Verse 18, it came to pass on the seventh day. Watch this, y'all. The child died. What? After all this prayer? After all this faith? I laid and I waited. I remember the day when my sister, it was a Saturday and I, we prayed. For her healing. She died that day and Monday they came up with a cure. And people who were sick like her on Saturday took the medication on Monday and they're here today. Strong, no case, no trace of no AIDS virus. But my sister died after we prayed. What's, 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 what's that about? And I'm sure many of you can attest to the same. Not that anybody was greater than the next, but it was her time to go. But David, after the baby died, listen what he did in verse 20. Then David arose from the earth, watch this, and washed and anointed himself. I got to get myself together. I, I, I got to remember that I'm still who I am. I'm still the king. I still uh, have to position myself. I messed up even in my own mess. I got to get myself together. He got up anointed himself, changed his power, apparel rather, and came into the house of the Lord and worshiped. Because although that did not come out the way I anticipated, he's still God. He still deserves worship. Yes, God answered my prayer. Yeah, yeah, y'all, yeah. But it wasn't. What I wanted to hear, y'all going to get it in a minute. Yes, God answers prayer, but sometimes it's not always what we want to hear. But if it's not what you want to hear, can you still give him glory? Job said, don't he slay me, yet will I trust him. That's, 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 that's it. We think that when we pray, we have the, 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 the permission to tell God what to do. But Paul said, who has known the mind of God that we might instruct him? Prayer is not the premise for you to tell God what to do. But prayer is to, is to put you in the position to handle what God has already declared he's going to do. Woo! You got to get that. The dialogue in prayer is not so much for God to hear us as much as it is for us to hear God. Matthew 6 and 8 says, for your father knoweth, this is the B part, the B part, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. What do you mean? Well, it just said it. Before you go to God, he already knows what you're in need of. Okay. Then the question now becomes, what's the sense of praying? If he already knows what I'm in need of, and he's going to do what he's going to do anyway. I'm going to tell you why you need to pray. Because prayer yeah, yeah, positions you to hear guidance and direction from God. Why? Because Psalm 37, 23 says this. Wait a minute. It says, wait, it says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Meaning that my steps for life has been pre-ordered. It's been laid out. And I don't know which way to go. So I got to pray 
so God can direct me in that path. When you look at Genesis 1.26, let's go there very quickly. It says, remember, let us make man in our what? Here we go, that image after our likeness. So in other words, when we were created from the very beginning, we were created in the image of God, which is a spirit. And while we were a spirit before he rolled us in Genesis 2 and 7 with flesh, yeah, he said in Jeremiah 1 and 5, before you entered your mother's womb, before you became flesh, I knew thee. I purposed in you destiny. I gave your spirit the total blueprint. That's why sometimes you can be walking around here today and you go, mm, feel like I've been before. Yes, your spirit uh -oh, got the revelation before you were born. Your spirit got the full blueprint. It saw this day before you entered your mother's womb. So your spirit gets the blueprint. Watch this. Before you enter your mother's womb, I, 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 I purposed in you. Then I sanctified and ordained you before you came out into the world. So you was fully equipped. He that begun to get work and you shall perform it. Yeah, that means that you were completely, yeah, completely uh, 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 developed to fulfill destiny. And so that spirit had all of that. Then God moved it over to Genesis 2 and 7. Put that spirit in dust. Rolled that spirit in dust. Blew his breath into that shell and you became alive. Flesh had no clue what the spirit knew. Y'all got to hear that. So my steps have been ordered by God and prayer yeah, lines me up with what God has preordained in my spirit that my flesh has no clue. That's why there's a way that seems right unto man, but always in the destruction. When we walk in the flesh, we end up where we don't belong. But when we walk in the spirit, we're lining up with what God uh, has ordained. That's why I got to pray so my spirit can connect with the direction God wants to take my flesh. Are right, you listening to me? Woo. My prayer is to line me up with the steps that have been ordered. And sometimes, watch this, those steps are through valleys. But when I go through the valley, <laughs> I don't fear no evil. You know why? Because I'm prayed up. <laughs> then y'all gonna get that in a minute. And when I go through the flood, it won't, it won't consume me to a point where if, it, if God allows me to go through it, and it may cause some havoc in my life. I take it. There's no temptation taking me. Such common to matter. God is faithful. Will not allow me to tempt it above that which I am able but with the same temptation. Make a way of escape. That means I can bear it because I'm prayed up. I go through the fire. I can come out of the fire because I'm prayed up. Not that I won't go through the fire. Not that prayer will keep me from going through the fire or to the fire. But if I go through the fire or to the fire, I can handle it because I'm prayed up. You will get up when you're prayed up. You will get up out of whatever situation you're in. Like David, if you're prayed up, Jesus cried, died, but because he was prayed up, he got up. And you can get up if you're prayed up. Whether you say, yes, God, I'm prayed up. Whether you say, no, God, whatever you say, I'm prayed up to handle it. Yeah. Are oh, you listening to me? Jeremiah was prayed up, discouraged, upset about his call. He knew he was equipped. We just read it before you entered your mother's womb, Jerry. I knew you. I, purpur I purposed you. I gave you everything you needed. Before you came out, I ordained you. Everybody got a, a plan until life hits. Every fighter got a plan until he gets hit with the first punch. That's why he has a train in his corner. Keep reminding him, don't, don't, you, you, you're losing your, you're losing your posture because that's what pressure does. Jesus knew what he was about to face, but yet when he got in there, he realized, whoa, this, this ain't, this is a little deeper. Take this cup if you can, God. We all go through it. But when you pray it up, no matter how much your call costs you or take you through, the good news is that if you're prayed up, you can get up. Jeremiah was frustrated. 
Jeremiah was wounded in his heart. I'm done. Jeremiah was wondering about his whole life. What was all this about? Man, I'm preaching and people aren't listening. People ain't paying me no attention. I'm sick of this. You know what he said? I'm done. How many preachers said that? You know what? I'm done. It ain't, it ain't even worth it. Ain't nobody listening. How many times have you said that? I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm just, ain't got to do with the ministry. I'm just done. I'm done. I'm tired of ministry. I remember one time a woman told me, she said, Bishop Jenkins, the Lord showed me, he told me that, that, that you got one more trial and, and, and he's going to take you to the next level. I said, well, you tell God I don't want no another level. If I got to go through what I just went through, I'm, I'm good right here. I don't want no more levels. I don't want no more blessings. I am good right here. If I got to go through what I went through, if this call is calling me to go higher, then you know what? You can have this. I don't want it no more. How many of you? Come to that point, even now, when I throw in that towel, I encourage you to get back on your knees and pray. Jeremiah was there. He said, but the moment I thought it was over, he said, something charged up in me. It was like fire sharp in my bone. That fire, when you know when you know what you are called to do, you can't quit. When you know, I'm talking about when it's inside of you, it's like fire. Shut up in your bone. You can't quit. And I want you to know, you're not going to quit. But you got to be honest with yourself. You got to be honest with God. Whatever's on your heart, you have to cast it. On him. His yoke is easy. Don't think God is that sensitive where he can't hear your complaints. It's okay. Don't question God with a slave mentality. So you don't have to go to God. You can go to the, well, that's a whole other subject. You can ask God. Lord, show me. It may not be what you want to hear. That's why it kind of drives me crazy with the prophecies going forth now. Every prophecy is about getting some, getting some. Nobody gonna prophesy about it. you. Better stop. <laughs> Let, I, I, I dare prophet to go or tell somebody you what you're doing. I have not heard that in a long time. A prophet are dealing with somebody about their mistakes. Always about a blessing coming. True prophecy is truth. When you go before God, give me the truth, God. That's all I want, and I'll be prayed up to handle whatever that truth is. Are right, you listening to me? I wrote a prayer, which I'm going to show after the, my announcements here. I wrote a prayer. One morning I got up. I was so depressed because two of my pastor friends passed away. And that morning, one of my good friends passed away from 19, COVID-19. I was so distraught and perplexed, vexed in my spirit. And I just wrote this prayer from the bottom of my heart. Some of you may have heard that prayer called, I'm just saying. And I put it on my YouTube page, hoping that people would listen. And perhaps they didn't have enough nerve to go to God. So I stood proxy for many and wrote that prayer from the bottom of my heart. And ever since I wrote that prayer, God has been moving in my heart and my spirit. And, and things have been turned around such that I, I can't even explain it because I got my answer. Some of the things I didn't want to hear, some of the people had to get out of my life and I was part of it, but I got my answer, especially as it dealt with this time in which we live. After the announcements, I'm going to come back and introduce you to this prayer that I hope you would share it with some people. Log on to our YouTube page, E.E. E. Jenkins, E. Earl Jenkins, rather, and allow that prayer to minister to your heart. And then share it with somebody. Share it. Subscribe to the page because I'm be doing some motivational prayers and speeches and different things like that on that channel, so that you can be encouraged on a weekly or two-week basis, bi-weekly, uh, bi-weekly. Right now, we're gonna turn you to our announcements. Please stay on because I got a couple more announcements to make with you. And Sister Pam, hold on. We'll be right back. Thank you so very much, Bishop Jenkins, for that anointed teaching. These are your True Love Center announcements. Please join us every Monday through Friday for our morning glory prayer from 625 a.m. until 7 a.m. 
You can join by dialing 712-432-0075 and when prompted, enter the code 200959-POUND. You are invited to join Bishop E. Earl Jenkins this Sunday at 10 a.m. for his Crises series. You can tune in to this live online Sunday service at www.truelovecenter.net or on Earl Jenkins' Facebook page. It's a series you don't want to miss. And again, we're inviting you to join us next Thursday evening, live on Facebook at 7.45 p.m. for Bishop Jenkins' Open Face Bible Teaching. Or you can dial in to 712-432-0075 and enter the code 200-959-POUND. We thank you for tuning in every week. And if you'd like to be a blessing and would like to give toward our ministry, here are the ways you're able to do so. You can mail in your tithe or your seed offering to True Love Center, 2630 South Broad Street, Hamilton, New Jersey, 08610, Or you can drop off your seed offering on Sunday between the hours of 11 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. You can also use the Cash app, dollar sign True Love Center, or the Givelify app. You can also give your seed offering on our website at www.truelovecenter.net. And don't forget, you are now able to view previous sermons on YouTube by searching E. Earl Jenkins. Again, we truly thank you for tuning in and we pray that God will continue to bless and cover you and your family. Now, here's Bishop Jenkins to give his closing remarks for the evening. Thank you, Sister Pam. And again, we want to thank you so much. Please govern yourself accordingly and uh, continue to pray for one another. Amen. We're going to ask you, please, man, please, sir, if you can drop your seed tonight, that'd be wonderful to love center. Please make sure we uh, go online and give our seed in advance our tithes and our offerings so that our finance team can manage things a little better. Sunday is a little late for us, and it helps us a great deal when you give early. And so we're going to ask you to do, spe- some, do something special tonight. I'm going to ask you to do something special tonight. We are really trying to position you guys to get the best. As you can see, we're, we're upgrading our system. I'm here at my house now. We had to do it. We had actually built a whole studio in the house. So we need your support so we can bring you the best to Love Center. Even though we know the building's going to come back, but we still have to position ourselves for online as we're doing now because some of y'all ain't coming back regularly. I know it. So we're going to be doing this as well. So please help us help you. We're working. I'm praying every morning like I normally would do. I'm getting up. I'm getting dressed. I go to service on Sunday. In fact, I'm starting what I call Word on the Go on Sunday. Every morning, I'm going to tap in early. I'm my way to church. Give you a little quick word before I get to church or have my devotion in the car. Amen. So you can log on with me. Word on the Go. Okay, so but we're working. I get up, I get dressed, I put on clothes like I'm going to see somebody. <laughs> but listen, I'm working. I'm praying. I'm preparing messages so that you have the best. I want to make sure you get the best experience that you can get. I ain't gonna roll out of bed. Y'all can roll out of bed. Stand your the computer. I'm not doing that. I'm going to work because that's my call, and I want to make sure you understand that. That I love all of you. I miss y'all like you wouldn't believe. I uh, start my callings and so forth as I get some more. I'm going to call out because I want you to know that we miss you. Lady misses you. And we, we, we'll be very excited to see y'all again. Okay. So again, I want you to listen to this prayer before you hang up. Amen. I want you to listen to this prayer. We're going to close out this prayer that I prayed. And I'm going to ask you, once you hear this prayer, go on to E. Earl Jenkins YouTube and share that prayer. Subscribe. Then share that prayer with somebody you know. I need to see y'all to increase this, okay? Because somebody needs to hear this prayer. God bless you. I love you. And I'll see you on Sunday. Hey, God, it's me again. I'm approaching you a little differently than I would normally come. It's kind of rhetorical, but I need to talk to you just for a moment. I know I'm your servant, but like Moses, I'm standing at the edge of the river of life acting like I know what to do, but I really need you. With no pun intended, please allow me to be what I was taught not to do, which is to question you. But I'm just saying, I figure you being all knowing and you abiding in me and I in you, 
I'm really not questioning you, but just trying to make sense with the five senses you've given me that help regulate my reality. It's real out here. People are dying and suffering. And the truth is, I'm a little scared. Which you already know, for we have not a high priest who hasn't been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So I know you get it. And I'm not trying to compare what you did for us to what we're going through, but just trying to understand where this is all going. I'm, I'm just saying, these are trying times as predicted would come. It's nothing new under the sun. I remember in the days of old, 10 plagues swept the land of Egypt like Corona is today. But is COVID-19 the 11th plague with eight more to go? If so, God, please cover us with your blood like you did for those of old. Truth is, God, my soul and mind looks back and wonder how am I making it over? I already know it's because of you, but what am I to do in the meantime? You were wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities, but like Paul and many others, I'm yet trying to manage that real dude called me. You carried the chest time of peace on your shoulder with every stripe, we're healed. I know I'm healed, my sister was healed, but I wish she was still alive. You said be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication, make our request known to you and you would give us a peace that will surpass our understanding. And that's what I'm trying to get in understanding. It's forgiveness, forgiving, if vengeance is yours. Am I truly to obey my master as a slave when you created us all equal? I know your word has been manipulated in the name of religion and control. So I know it's not you, but those who claim to be like you. I'm just saying, although my faith hasn't wavered, but it's certainly been tried, like many of the other faithfuls. Job regretted the day he was born. Jesus asked you to take his cup. And I'm the least of the two standing proxy for many who dare to come boldly to your throne as you suggested. But you said, that when the kingdom of God has suffered violence, at some point the violent, the wounded, the downtrodden, those who are hurting, have to rise up, bombard heaven, and take it by force. So, I'm bold enough to come, humbly as I know how, seeking your grace, seeking your action that's compelled through the execution of your mercy that stems from the compassion of love knowing that your love allows us to be chasing with correction and to rise with new mercies every single morning and try again well it's a new day with all new mercies and i've decided to rejoice and glad in it and god whatever you decide to do it's already done that includes my healing my hope my future the restoration of your creation. Although I may not always understand your will, but let it be done. You begun a good work in me, and with so much left to do, I still trust you. You're the author and the finisher of my faith. I started with you, and I'm gonna end with you. I'm just saying.